Welcome back to Plague Size Studios, everyone. Ryan here, and I'm a few months behind the crowd on this one, but today, nonetheless, I'm excited to be bringing you another free VST tutorial featuring amplifier tones by Nalik Software. I've received a number of requests over the past couple of months to take a look at these newly released preamps. At least they used to be new when I first got the suggestions and, uh, well, I kind of lost track of time and went on to different projects and new stuff got released and I totally forgot to make this video. So here we are, a little late to say the least, but um, at least better late than never. So today's developer showcase um, featuring Nalex, Nalex, Nalex software. I'm sure I want to butcher their name throughout this entire video as an interesting case because they appear to be just like a, a lone developer that just kind of makes stuff as they wish. There's even like a match the shape game at the bottom, which is weird, <laughs> but there's a, a few other interesting plugins I'm not going to cover today because I'm predominantly focused on these rack preamplifier or at least virtual racks that, you know, trying to emulate popular high gain rock and metal tones. And, uh, you know, that's, that has my name written all over it. There are going to be some cool clean and breakup sounds to achieve as well. Um, but they do have some other stuff like this one triode and this megatone, which is an amp tone stack that you can use on its own, which I think could be really useful for certain, you know, like fake distortion sounds. And then you have like this totally clean preamp, which again, I'm not going to be taking advantage of. I'm really interested in evaluating these amps that we all kind of have a reference for, you know, and seeing if they are worthy um, ads to your library. As usual with these free plugins, I'm not going to be criticizing them too harshly. They are free after all, um, though I'll certainly be going over how I prefer to use them, some of their drawbacks, their shortcomings, um, but this will be mostly tutorial focused. Um, with that said, this is donationware, so if you end up using this to make something that sells a decent amount of money, uh, then consider throwing the developer a few bucks here and there. And before anyone else asks, yes, new studio monitors, uh, if you're interested in seeing a standalone video on them, let me know down below. Otherwise, just, uh, yeah, I got bigger speakers. They sound better. They're more accurate. Hoorah. <laughs> Let's get into the tutorial. I'm going to start this segment off a little differently from the way that I normally would with these kind of videos. Usually in the beginning, I would introduce each plugin one by one and then kind of go over my favorite tones for each, how I would set them up and then move on to the next track. But for this one, I want to do a quick comparison between all of the preamps we're looking at. Uh, I think that will give kind of a, a good starting point to reference uh, some of my critiques as well as some of the advice I have going forward in this video. So I'm um, in reverse order here. We have the Valver, the Uber, the Rectifier, which they just literally straight up call it a Rectifier, um, the Ninja, the Gerbert, hard G or soft G, not exactly sure, but I'm guessing Gerbert, uh, like Jif, and the Crunchman. So unless further stated or otherwise shown explicitly. I'm using the Torpedo uh, Wall of Sound plugin for the cabinet and power amplifier simulation because these are indeed preamps. So this isn't, you know, your entire guitar sound. And it's basically a requirement to have some sort of cabinet simulation. I'm using a blend of a Recto standard and a Greenback 4x12 with a couple different microphones. And then I'm using the 6L6 power amp model presence maxed out a little bit of depth and um, this may be 
considered cheating in some ways because this is indeed a premium product, um, but it really isn't that expensive if you just buy a couple models. Um, the main thing though I want to show here is how these plugins react with quote unquote premium gear because um, yes, I can get really good results out of some of my favorite plugins like Ignite Amps um, products, which I show all the time on here because they're really great. But I kind of want to make the preamps here today the quote unquote bottleneck um, in terms of, you know, perceived quality or what you might have in mind uh, since this is free ultimately. So again, unless otherwise stated, you're going to be hearing the same mic and cab sound as well as the power amplifier, which isn't explicitly required if you say have a um, an impulse response that bakes in a little more than just the cab sound on its own. But um, again, for direct comparisons later on, this is the way I want to go about it. And all the differences you're hearing are ultimately coming from these pre-amplifiers. <laughs> So there were a couple of things immediately noticeable to me when I first played through these plugins and were only confirmed by tests like this. Um, first things first, a lot of these preamps just sit in the mix almost identically. Now that's not to say they sound completely the same, but um, you know, like the rectifier preamp and the Gerbert, um, they kind of dialed in similarly. Now, as you can see, the, the settings aren't the same here, but um, by the time that you adjust for things like the, the pot taper differences and the tone stacks, they sound a little more samey than the actual amplifiers do, um, based on my experience with stuff like this. Now, that's not to say these aren't accurate to the preamps in a lot of ways, because we're ultimately pairing them with an outboard power amp and cabinet sound, things that sometimes you wouldn't do with these kind of amp heads, but... Um, ultimately it does detract from, I think some of the uniqueness of them and you just kind of have to cater to those similarities, um, especially between, you know, say the crunch man and the valver, which both have that sort of Marshall style tone stack and gain structure, though they are certainly different. On the other hand, going back to that gain structure comment, I do find that a lot of these preamps do a nice job of differentiating themselves in terms of their high gain character. Now you switch to the clean mode and a lot of these start to sound really samey besides maybe a few tone stack differences. But, um, you know, like with the Ninja, this is kind of your plug straight into the amp high gain uh, Mike Fortin kind of sound. Whereas the rectifier, you know, it needs help just like a real rectifier does. Otherwise, it's a, it's a bit squishy, as you hear um, in those demos there. So um, while I feel they kind of have the output frequency response that is comparable between each other, their gain structure on their own, especially when you add in switches like this or uh, the separate input and gain controls on the Ninja, it really helps to give them their own character. With that said, there is undoubtedly a unique sonic character to all of these that make them sound like a Nalex plugin, you know, in the same way that a Vadim Tarnoff or um, a Mercurial or a Neural DSP plugin, they all have a certain distortion character to them that I can automatically pick out and go, okay, it's coming from one of those guys. Um, it's not, you know, necessarily a bad thing, but comparing them to some of the other free vendors out there, I, it definitely helped me pick favorites. I'll go that far for now. So with that said, let's go one by one and talk about each of these preamps individually. And at the end, I might touch a little bit on some of their other offerings. The Valver appears to be one of the oldest preamp releases from Nalex. And this is basically a three gain stage or four, if you have it set to ultra, JMP 2203, 2204 style affair, as far as I can tell. Um, because in the regular mode, you know, the gain structure goes from basically entirely clean here with just a little bit of, you know, British breakup if you really push it hard with volume um, to kind of plexi normal channel here to 
sort of jumper plexi style stuff. So you can certainly, you know, kind of fake JTM 45 tones in this region. Um, then the ultra setting is, you know, it's your Van Halen Brown sound shredder territory do basically about anything requiring a, a British guitar tone. Um, now this still retains that, uh, squashed, you know, undoubtedly martial sound in this mode. So if you want something that is uh, a little bit more, say, high passed in the pre gain stage area, then you can absolutely throw, you know, your favorite tube screamer knockoff or even an EQ plugin before this. Uh, it's not hot rotted in that sense. But all your tricks work, you know, the brown sound, everything at 10 or, you know, the Tony Iommi or the Magic 6s and 7s or, you know, you want to do more conservative ACDC style settings, those work just as well. So um, this is definitely in that classic hair metal dad rock <laughs> kind of territory if, uh, if that's what you're going after. So a couple of nitpicks about this preamp, and some of which will actually apply to all of the preamp models. Uh, first of all, these power tubes in the background, and even this output transformer, uh, is bullshit because this is indeed just a preamp. So you know the artwork is a little misleading, and I'm pretty sure that is literally just taken from a, a set of what is that rubies <laughs> on like a reverb or Sweetwater listing. So that's pretty cool. Um, but uh, the power amp definitely, you know, adds a lot to the sound of those classic Marshall tones, especially when you hit them high with, you know, master volume and you saturate the tubes and, and all that good stuff. But the output frequency spectrum is, of course, um, affected by the speaker load and ultimately makes it sound scooped in the low mids and more pronounced on those low bass frequencies and high frequencies. Now, I say all that because I think this amp and basically all of these amps are really mid heavy and that's not to say you can't compensate for it but you'll notice that my mid controls are quite a bit lower than I normally would have them for amps of any of these varieties um, to the point that I think you might be better off taking you know if you're using a plug-in like this or hell just a, any EQ you know turning down your vocal 800 ish Hertz area you know between six and a thousand somewhere around there down a few db because I, f I feel these amps really need it again depending on what irs you're using might not need it but that's something that i find to be characteristic of all of these pre-amplifiers um, but with that once you compensate for it it's pretty convincing <laughs> Onto the Crunch Man then, which is indeed based on the Friedman BE and HBE amplifiers, kind of says it right over here in the toggle switch. And um, this one's pretty cool. It's got a fat switch, the CFF, which is like a bright switch type thing, which makes the high end a bit more saturated um, and bitey no matter which position you have the gain set to. The tone stack works in your traditional Friedman Marshall way. Uh, there is an added presence control, which I like. I don't know exactly what's doing, probably a shelf, um, but it does interact with even presence controls on power amp simulation, so don't be afraid to use this as well. And I would say that overall, this amplifier picks up where the valve leaves off, both on the high and low end of the gain spectrum. I certainly find the BE mode to be more catered to break up to crunch tones, um, just kind of having a, a more contemporary gain structure to it and the HBE being, you know, full out balls to the walls, hard rock and heavy metal, especially if you boost the thing. But given the controls it has, it really doesn't need boosted for those quintessential Friedman tones. When I think Friedman, um, that would certainly helps if you're going for, you know, something like Macedon. Um, but overall, I think if you're looking for the 
kind of easy introduction into a Friedman style amplifier, this isn't a bad option. Again, just kind of keep in mind that, um, it, you know, your experience is very much going to change depending on which cab you're using or uh, power amp simulation. So pair it with something that is within the ballpark of a Friedman half stack, and uh, I think you'll get good results. <laughs> Next, the mysteriously named Uber. What what could this be, I wonder? It's the Uber Shaw. Yeah, every, everyone knows that. Um, and this is a one-channel affair, unlike the Valver and Crunch Man, though it does have a boost mode. I uh, don't really see much of a use for it unless you have a really low you know, output pickup that you're running through this and simply want the gain structure to react more as if it already had, you know, a, a boost in front. I, I can't really rationalize it because, um, this is too much even without it. And, uh, you know, well back here would be fine if, if you're boosting this with a, a pedal of any kind though, for a lot of tones, especially, you know, death metal kind of stuff, the Uber shawl just doesn't need it. Now there are certainly some inaccuracies, um, just, you know, from my own ear, uh, that I was able to pick out. Number one, the treble control, does not work at all like the actual Uber shawl, which is actually an improvement in my mind because the Uber has a ridiculous taper on it to the point that like trouble at noon is basically the same as having trouble at one or two on a Marshall amp. So this one's a bit more reactive. Um, but overall I find the gain structure to be, I don't know, a little too perfect to be the Uber shawl. There is a nastiness to the Uber um, when you crank it up to the gain levels that I think it really shines at, um, that this doesn't quite capture. It's a great sounding preamp on its own, especially for that, you know, just plug straight in application, as you'll see here. Um, it sounds really great without anything, but, uh, there's something about it. There's a sloppiness. There's a, almost a sludgy saturated sound, uh, that I'm, I'm missing from this one. So um, again, it's really cool on its own. And as you'll see with a uh, gratuitous range of settings that I'm using here, it does sound really nice. I simply wouldn't trust this to be, you know, the go-to Uber replacement if you're going after those tones. <laughs> Following that, the rectifier recording preamp, huh? <laughs> Mesa boogie font and all. No, no sense in doing original artwork when you can just take a picture on Google Images and slap your logo over it. Kind of, kind of ballsy, gotta say. Um, I don't really care. It is free after all, so it's it's hard to critique in that manner too much. But yeah, this is not pretty to look at. Uh, I mean, the preamp itself is fine, but this. Uh, 
stale piss yellow background isn't really doing it for me in terms of inspiration. So I would like to see that uh, rectified I, 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 at some point. Um, but everything else works decently enough. It'd be cool that when you, you know, if you switch channels, it would actually switch to the proper row. But um, either way, it's fine. I'm not a huge stickler for that kind of stuff for uh, free amplifiers. The only other modification besides the traditional gain tone stack presence master um, is revision, which uh, doesn't actually change like, you know, the rectifier series one or series two. I would really like that. That'd have been cool. Um, this really seems to only change the um, the pot taper on the gain. And uh, there's one of these that I prefer over the other. And now I can't remember which it is. I think it's uh, revision two is the one that more accurately reflects my amp. Um, but other than that, it, it pretty much behaves the same in the sense that, you know, you push the mids and it kind of does a more, um, flat frequency response. You scoop it out, bass, treble here. It's, you know, it's a rectifier. Everyone kind of knows what this sounds like. With that said, there was an opportunity for a direct comparison, um, for this amp. And when you set it next to the Poulin Lecto, I'm not exactly, you know, impressed with this one as much as I might be if I just heard it in isolation because the Lecto sounds damn near identical to my actual amplifier and um, this one isn't really an improvement even when you compensate for the power amp differences. So it's good. I just wouldn't necessarily say it's any better than stuff that was already out there and, you know, that one in particular has more features. So Take that for what you will, um, but this one definitely needs some help in terms of either a boost pedal or pre-EQ. Number five, we have the Gerbert. It might be Gerbert, but I'm going to follow my sword for this one because when you contract German and Herbert, you get Gerbert. So, yeah, uh, this has to be based on the Diesel Herbert amp, which, as frightening as it may be, is actually one of their more affordable amplifiers, and it's still very expensive. And a lot of people would look at that price tag in their cool little, you know, metal cutouts on the grill and think, oh, this is a, you know, super high gain heavy metal amps. And, and diesels really aren't. They have a cool gain structure. They sit in the mix in a way that, you know, a, a purely metal kind of amplifier would, would work out to be. But they're really just like hard rock amps for me. Um, you know, I think of Stained and I think of Tool um, and a little bit of James Hetfield when ultimately he was still playing predominantly hard rock material. Um, that's the kind of stuff I think about when I hear this kind of amplifier. And this does tackle that tone very well. There is this saturation, but a coarseness on top of it that uh, a lot of amps really don't attain unless you boost them. And um, this is cool. It, it definitely scratches that itch. Does it do that with some of the more accurate uh, representations I've heard? Not exactly, but... This is, again, for free, hard to complain. Uh, you do have two channels to play with, both the drive and clean. Um, I never thought, you know, the VH4 or any of the diesel amplifiers had a particularly amazing clean channel. They sound very good. 
Um, but you know, I don't think of diesel when I think of clean channel, so hard to critique it too much based on that, but, um, definitely serviceable. And, uh, yeah, if you're looking to make a, uh, you know, fear inoculum cover at some point, here you go. Here's a cheap way to do it. Last but certainly not least, we have the Ninja, which is basically the ultimate Brutals amp of this lineup. Even its description kind of gives this away as a tribute to contemporary amps like the Randall Satan or even the 5153 to some extent in terms of being just like a plug straight through and and get a ridiculously grindy guitar tone. And um, this achieves that, and it does it really well with passive pickups. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what they voiced this with, because when I put an EMG-equipped guitar through this, it sounds a bit quacky and honky. And uh, for that reason, I would really like if they had expanded the um, pre-filtering to have some sort of high and low control, at least, just like, you know, girth and grind on, on a Fortin design, or even something more, um, you know, complicated, I guess you could say, like the Mesa Mark series has. Either way, um, for most applications, I think this will work really well, and you can always do some pre-EQ tweaking if you need to. But uh, yeah, the drive channel is ridiculous. I think this is more than enough for a lot of applications. Uh, I don't ever foresee a reason you would need gain all the way up or input all the way up, and especially neither of those together. Um, The tone stack basically is begging to be set this way though I find everything at noon to be really honky and just digital sounding you know you hear that and go oh well, that's like a cheap pod derivative uh, whereas you kind of mellow it out a little bit more and throw some low end on it and it starts to become pretty convincing and ultimately this is kind of in that output frequency range that you know stuff like those Fortin NTS or nameless plugins from Neural DSP kind of sit in um, other than that, there is a very nice clean channel, kind of a fender clean thing. I don't think it, you know, it, this is something that most people will be going for edge of breakup tones on, but, um, you know, you need your clean sections before your genty breakdown, then it's certainly there. And, uh, though I won't be going into it explicitly, I'm always happy to see when, uh, these kind of amps have a good clean channel. <laughs> Since the Ninja does have such a nice clean channel, I thought this would be a good opportunity to show off the power end, which is a power amp utility of sorts. I don't think this has nearly as many features as I would want to see in an actual power amp simulator, but you can crank up the power, i.e. distortion in this case, 
and it does sound more or less like power amp distortion, which is pretty cool. You can change the bias of the virtual tubes, add in asymmetry, which will affect the distortion a little bit, and um, you know, box standard output control. I would have really liked to seen some sort of, even if it's rudimentary, um, impedance modeling to affect the output. That way, when you pair this with a preamp, it, it's kind of baked in. It sounds like you know a two preamp going through a two power amp. Um, it, or some sort of current drive power amp in general. Um, and in that case, with all of these high gain amps we've looked at, I don't find this useful at all because I want 99% of the distortion coming from the preamp. But if you're into those sort of edge of breakup sounds um, where you want a lot of master volume type distortion or you want to fake an amp that doesn't have one, then this could be a pretty cool way of going about that. And with that, I've covered all of the Nalex, 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 however you say it, uh, pre-amplifier plugins, as well as the one power amp plugin. And uh, as I said before, they offer some other good stuff that I think could be worth checking out, depending on how you play. Um, for me, these are always the ones that are the most interesting. And overall, I could give a recommendation to go check them out and at least add a few of these to your library. I definitely think there are some competitors out there in the free scene that make a couple of these kind of questionable, um, but in other instances, like with the uh, Ninja or the Gerbert, Gerbert in particular, they can be really good ways to access otherwise unobtainable tones for the uh, price point of absolutely nothing. So if you found this interesting, educational, or just entertaining at all, then uh, please let me know down below any other questions and comments. I'll take them as usual, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.